I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Benicia Ponder. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am amazing. It is an awesome night for me. It's a great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? Well, I am currently in Atlanta, Georgia. Sweet. And which of your talents is responsible for us connecting? Well, my talent to help entrepreneurs and purpose-driven individuals to write, market, and publish best-selling transformational books. Oh, super. Oh, super. So are you an author as well? I am. I am. I am an author of, of two best, best-selling books. I am. All right. Tell us the name of the books, please. Okay. So my two books are called, the first one is called Prepare to Receive More. It's the step-by-step prosperity partnership plan with God. And the second is called prospering your purpose, helping you to turn your, your expensive hobby into a thriving, profitable success. Hmm. The both sound like fun. <laughs> That's great. That's well, great. I hope they're fun and engaging and all of that stuff. Mostly I hope that they, they really help to provide breakthroughs for people as they're moving to the next level of their lives and their businesses. Hmm. And that definitely is important. So who did you learn the skill from the skill of writing? <laughs> I can't really say that I can recall who I remember, who I've learned this from. It's been something that I've loved from a child, whether it's been um, writing, um, you know, stories and things like that in school. Definitely when I was in law school, I learned to write with a little more analytical <laughs> and legal flair. Um, the time I've spent as a ghost writer, um, being persuasive and those kind of things. So I've been a writer pretty much all of my life, wow. either, you know, persuasive or creatively, even as far as strategic planning and business planning, grant writing. So in all ways, I've been a writer. Yeah, well, that's amazing. That's amazing. So you've done this and now you have uh, the business model where you're helping authors as well, right? Uh, where's the best yeah. place for people to go to connect with that? Well, luminaryauthors.com is the place to go. And I have a great free resource there to help you to learn how to monetize your message. I find that a lot of of entrepreneurs, especially say, I have a book inside of me. I <laughs> talk to at least three a week who say, I've been meaning to write my book. I've been meaning to write my book, but it's either I don't have enough time or I'm not sure exactly how it fits within my business model and how can I make actually make money with the book. And so the monetize your message framework allows you to to have a blueprint, a checklist of those things that you need to have in place as you're moving forward with sharing your message and beyond a book, but sharing your your genius with the world. Hmm. So you've been doing this for a bit and you've definitely seen the ups and downs of the um, writing world, right? In terms of the individuals that have the stuff to, to write and those that um, are writing but um, aren't able to monetize. Uh, why will you continue to repeat the skill of helping others with that? Well, I, I truly believe that every every one of us has a message to share. That is at the core of of everything I do. I believe that God has gifted us with experiences, with gifts and talents, special special genius that, that we have. And the messages that we have inside of us are meant to share others. And it doesn't really matter if you are an attorney or a doctor or a chiropractor or <laughs> a, a exercise coach or anything of that nature. There is something inside of you that can help someone else. That's a solution to someone else's problem. And I totally believe that if if we, al we allow our lights to shine and share our messages with others, then we will be able to serve those people that really need us the most. Hmm. Well, do tell us one other thing, Benicia, that you've done consistently over the last three years. Um, I think consistently over the last three years has been my focus on both purpose and prosperity, making sure that as 
um, I am living out my purpose and my calling in life that I'm helping others to do the same and do so in a way that brings them prosperity. I mean, this is really something that is near and dear to my heart because I jumped from being an attorney, <laughs> making about $300 an hour, and I jumped into a purpose-driven business where I woke up one day and I had $3.11 in my bank account. Ouch. and. I, right. <laughs> so I realized that if it, it's nothing wrong with following your passions and your purpose, but you have to be strategic about it and you have to combine the impact that you want to make with income to support that. Because one of the things I say all the time, you can't let your light shine if you can't pay your light bill. So if you are not, if you're not able to really sustain your purpose, then it's going to fall by the wayside. And, and a lot of people give up on pursuing their passions and their dreams because they cannot find a viable way for it to support them. Hmm. How does it make you feel to know that you actually cracked the code on this in terms of moving from the attorney, seeing your money, as you said, dwindle, and then being able to change the dynamics of the situation? Well, I'll tell you, it's a learning process and it's a it's an ever-growing process. So cracking the code, I, <laughs> I don't know if I could say I cracked the code, but I will say that I have learned the principles and the strategies that work and and the code is consistency, not feeling as if you've arrived at a specific place. So even now I'm continuing to practice what I teach. I'm continuing to live those. And I can tell when I'm slacking off because I can see the fluctuations and the changes, but it's it's really a lifelong process. It's, it's not something where you've arrived. It's something that you continue to do and continue to practice over and over again in your business. Love that, love that that um, suggest to someone who's listening why they should start now? Well, the best, the best way I can say it is that think of what you have as the cure for someone else's ailment, someone else's disease, someone else's problem, and they are aching. They are, they are waiting for you to let your light shine. And because you are not sharing your message with the world, someone is going without, someone is struggling. And you were really called. You were called to share your message. And, and that message can have a great impact in the lives of others. And it can bring abundant income to you as well as you are sharing your gifts with the world. So I would encourage everyone to to explore their own genius and find out how they can share it in the world. Hmm. Amazing audience. We are live with Benicia Ponda. Again, you can check her out as she states it at luminaryauthors.com. Benicia, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Hmm. Benicia, what is your earliest childhood memory? Hmm. You know, my earliest childhood memory is being at my grandmother's house and she, um, she's reading to me. She, my grand, I spent a lot of my early um, childhood with my grandmother as my parents were working and all those things. I didn't go to a daycare early on, but my grandmother was my caretaker and she would read 15 to 20 books to me every day, wow. you know, those small children. But she would read to me every day, 15 to 20 books. And I started reading at the age of three. Um, and those are my earliest memories of being with her and just her teaching me and and really nurturing me. Hmm, that's amazing. How old do you think you were in that initial memory? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't know. It, it had to be before two. Wow. Um, but I can just I mean, that's just a sense that I have. Um and I could just, I could just remember just sitting um, at her house, mm. and she, she's reading to me and telling me stories and <laughs> mm. all those other kind of, of good things. If you had to connect the dots on that memory, what would you connect it to? I would connect it to my love of learning and also my love of teaching, um, because all throughout my life I can see that I have been. Uh, a teacher. I've always wanted to teach others what I know. And I can remember it, even in kindergarten, because I was one of the ones who knew how to read. My teacher gave me a reading group. <laughs> so I was, I was teaching others how to read. And, and now I'm sharing with others how to live with purpose and prosperity, how to share your, your genius in the world. And, um, 
it, it's a thread that that goes beyond, you know, goes throughout my whole life of teaching and learning and sharing um, and giving. That's amazing. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Sure. I love I love the fact that your name starts with B and your last name starts with P because I think just in looking at your name um, and given the memory that you expressed, it's fascinating that you could either believe or ponder. And that's the B or the P, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it's really intriguing that your grandmother um, exercised um, a belief in you. She believed that if she would read to you, that you would inspire others, I'm guessing. And it's fascinating to see whether or not she believed it. She did what was necessary. And you have now taken the position to inspire others, even back in kindergarten, as you express, right? But it's mm-hmm. it's amazing, the word luminary, right? A person who inspires or influences others. Mm-hmm. Um, and to see that you're doing that... Um, is pretty amazing how it connects. Yes, I love that. Believe or ponder. I love that. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. If we fast forward mm. to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Oh my gosh, when I was 12? Hmm. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what? Those those middle school years, oh gosh, I, I really could not tell you what my favorite song was. Sure, it's cool. What's the first song that pops in your mind? Mm, you know what pops into my mind? This was this is a sixth grade memory. So I, I guess I would have been about 11 or 12. But I can't remember my dad driving me to school. And every um, day, every day before he dropped me off, the um, Bobby Brown song, Tender Roni, <laughs> was playing at the same time. Um, before we got out of the car so i have to i have to say that because i can remember that very vividly right before we turned onto the driveway for the school that song was on. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess they had like a set time for that song exactly. but it would come on and i can i can remember that in the sitting in the back seat of his car um, as he was taking me to school every morning. So, mm. so yeah. That's wow, I hadn't even thought about that in a long time. Yeah, it's good, it's good, it's good. I'm glad you're having fun. Well, unfortunately, though, we have arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Benicia? Yes. Benicia, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. Oh, what about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Uh, probably more than eight. <laughs> All right. Benicia, after 1,001 Conversations in 2016, I came up with a workbook. The name of it is called Yours. It stands for your own unique real self. And the idea is you answer questions similar to these that unlock, hopefully, your own unique real statement, um, a mission statement, if you would. Benicia, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who Benicia Ponda is, what would you say that is? I think that my mission is to illuminate the world with messages of hope, healing, and breakthrough and helping others to let their light shine. Hmm, Love it. Hey, Benicia, this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? No, this has been awesome and amazing. I will just remind people of luminaryauthors.com if you're ready to share your message with the world. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Benicia Ponda, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.